I have a dream. Even those who haven't studied the history of the United States, these four words have been etched into our memory. On the 20th of August 1963, Martin Luther King stood and preached to over 250,000 people and in a short 17 minutes. This speech has gone down as one of the greatest of all time. Now, my question to you is why? Why is it that even six decades later, this speech still has such a strong rhetoric within a contemporary audience? Why is it that this speech has been ingrained in our minds while so many others have been faded through time? Obviously, we cannot negate contextual factors. The speech was spoken at the height of the civil rights movement, where African Americans were fighting for their rights. But it's not just remembered as a historical speech. It's also recognized as one of the greatest speeches of all time. Take away the, bone, take away the context in, in which it was written, and what you are left with, the bones of a literary work of art. As to why it's so good, just read one of the thousands of analyses made by experts. They'll talk about nouns, verbs, adjectives, ver um, repetition, short and long sentences, and the list goes on and on. But this isn't exclusive to King's speech. It's not a gate-kept secret. All speeches have these techniques, but not all speeches are good. So back to my original question, what makes this speech so good? Why is it so effective? This is where statistics may unveil the answer. And in this video, I hope to show you the hidden bridge between mathematics and linguistics. Let's take this little excerpt from King's speech. We can see in the colours the use of linguistic techniques that King uses to persuade his audience. In red, we have the metaphors. In green, we have the inclusive uh, pronouns. And in yellow, we have repetition. And in the other colours, we, we can see any other use of linguistic t uh, terms to, in order to persuade the audience. Now, this is all good, but if we were looking at it from a language point of view, this is where the analysis would stop. However, let's look at it from a mathematical point of view. In this short excerpt, we see that the average sentence length is 15.58, and the average syllables per word is 1.58. Now, this isn't enough to draw conclusions from, it's far too small of a sample set. However, what if we took the speech as a whole? Now, we see that the average sentence length is 19, and the average syllable uh, per word has stayed the same. However, most interestingly, the standard deviation of words per sentence is 12. That's huge. And this is because throughout the speech, we can see that uh, Martin Luther King uses a variety of short and long sentences in order to create contrast and really emphasize and get a lot of rhetoric with the audience. Now, this again is just one single speech. We need more speeches to see if there's a pattern that can emerge here. Maybe there's a pattern with the average words per sentence in all the Martin Luther King speeches. Maybe if we could aggregate all the results and put them together, a pattern could arise. But if we're willing to do that with all of Martin Luther King speeches, why should we stop there? Why don't we take the top 100 speeches of all time and see if through analyzing them we can see a pattern. Maybe it's a pattern with the adjectives for verbs ratio. Maybe it's a pattern with the metaphors. Or maybe it has a pattern in many, a thousand other variables. But if we find a pattern with the top speeches, speeches known for their quality and persuasiveness, then just maybe we found a rubric for rhetoric. Now, let me just stop. If someone had come to you three minutes ago and told you that you could analyze language with mathematics, and not only that, but you could also ensure a speech to be persuasive through the use of statistics, 
probably tell them to put down the pipe. But now, it doesn't seem like such a far-fetched story. Maybe language and mathematics aren't polar opposites, but can, I, but can also complement each other. The analysis I did before was far too simplistic for a good speech. We only looked at average sentence length and average syllables per word. And a good speech has so many other variables. But and we, can, we cannot account for all these little things with a simple algorithm. This is where AI would jump in. AI would help to draw more complex con uh, conclusions that on our own we wouldn't be able to see. More importantly, we could teach the rubric to AI in order to ensure that we can um, to make our speeches much more effective. In short, we now have a tool that understands how to persuade humans and how language un persuades us and how we can be influenced by it. But why limit this to speeches? Any form of writing can be analysed and used in such a manner. And you could ensure that anything you're trying to say gets done in the most effective manner. From blogs to poems, from short stories to plays, this can all be analysed with an AI. You simply would have to grab text that you find are effective, draw the lines between them, find some conclusions, put it into AI, and voila, you're done. Imagine you're writing a sad story, and you've hit a writer's block. You can simply look at the rubric, and you get an indication of where you should go. Or, better yet, you put it into an AI, and suddenly you've got a text that it seems like Mr. Edgar Allan Poe was, had written it and people were bawling their eyes out. From my own experience, and I'm sure yours too, literature has always been taught from, an, uh, from purely a linguistic view. Your favourite poems, your favourite stories, and even your favourite characters have only, been, have only ever been illuminated through the lens of language. And as I, as I hope I've explained through the video, if you only look at it from a linguistic scope, you're leaving a whole other world of analysis in the dark. 